Coming up next, the NVIDIA Shield isn't just for gaming. We've got some earbuds for Bluetooth, some lenses for your iPhone, and a brand new convertible tablet from Acer. You gotta watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by Smart Things. Smart Things lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, Smart Things is offering Before You Buy listeners 10% off any home security or solutions kit. And you get free shipping in the United States when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit at checkout. Welcome to Before You Buy, it's Twit's product review show where we take the latest gadgets and gizmos that we get into the brick house and we give it to hosts and staff members so that they can tell us their honest opinions about whether or not you should be spending your hard-earned cash. Uh, joining us for the first review is uh, well a regular to the Twit TV network. You'll find her on many of our shows from all about Android to, of course, before you buy, that's right, it's Miriam Joar. Miriam, thank you very much for coming back. Good to see you, Robert. Now, How's it going? Good, and much better because you've got this in front of you. Now, this <laughs> is an NVIDIA Shield. Yes. And it's, it's gotten a lot of press because it's a great gaming device, but you wanted to take us in a slightly different slant. Yeah, so I won this uh, at a contest in South, South by Southwest, and I really don't need another tablet, and I thought to myself, what, I mean, I've got, uh, this is K1 based, and I've got a K1 based, uh, what is it, the uh, Nexus 9, I guess? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, hey, let's see how it compares, right? Because the Nexus 9 is a little pricier. This is an eight inch device, and it's really a gaming device. I mean, it has, you know, I didn't get the control. That was another reason why I kind of decided not to focus on the gaming part. But it turns out that it does have this interesting uh, stylus. It's capacitive. So at first it seems kind of gimmicky, but, um, because it has uh, the ability to, um, you know, it's kind of a bevel, like uh, the shape. Right, you can yeah, actually kind of get a, a tip or like uh, a wider stance. But what's really interesting is this app comes with the tablet. And if you love to paint or draw, this uh, uses a GPU to simulate the slickness of oil painting and the mixing of oil painting. And so let me demonstrate. It'll be just a lot easier. So here I've got it really big. And as you can see, there is like, smearing going on in real time. Oh. And uh, if, I've made it really thick so we can be seen really well here. And watch, see? Uh, and, and of course, this is one of the things that NVIDIA is famous for. This is right. what they use their GPU clusters for. So this, you see it's that? It's a physics effect. So, um, so if, you know, this exaggerated because you can adjust the brush size and the thickness and the, and the mixture here. Let me do it a little bit less crazy by kind of dialing everything down a little bit so you can see. So. You know, here, obviously, the green's getting completely lost inside the yellow because it's so thick. And notice I'm smearing kind of a composite of things. And it's really kind of cool to be able to play with that. And then the other thing that's interesting here is they have uh, an option for uh, a uh, watercolor. And the watercolor has gravity where it will leak down your canvas oh, base. Nice. Yeah, so that's kind of one of the things that really kind of got me excited about this product. It's obviously the software and the GPU processing, but... And that's what I was going to ask you because this, this is not super unique to this tablet, or is it? I mean, does this only work on NVIDIA's tablet? Yes, because you need the K1 GPU for that. Mm. And also this, I think the pen is slightly optimized for, oh, okay. you okay. know, but uh, you look, so you can kick, mix how much water you want on your watercolor, and if I make it very liquid, and um, there's a way here to turn on gravity. So gravity's on now, watch. You can see it starting to smear oh, down the canvas. Okay. And yeah. look, it does feel like you're using watercolors. Uh, let me change it. Somehow it's a little bit picky something. See that? 
Yeah, and again, these are these are physics effects. So yeah. if you've ever played a game, you on can a, turn a off video gravity. Video, that's what this is. And then, of course, you can dry the canvas, which is really awesome, right? Boom! Canvas is dry now. So what does it look like after an hour, basically? So um, anyway, I'm not. This was just one of the things I wanted to show you, and kind of getting it set up with the right settings to initiate your canvas and your drawing is a little time consuming. So I thought I'd start with that. But let's talk about it as a consumption device, as a tablet. So as you can see. It's an 8-inch display. It's got a 1920 by 1200 display. It's a bit of an odd resolution and aspect ratio. Uh, really great quality front-facing speakers. Uh, as I said, K1 inside, 2 gigs of RAM, and 16 gigs of storage. All this for $299. Um, also has a micro SD card slot, so you can add more storage. Uh, also comes in the 32 gig version for or is it $399 right, or $100, $100 more. more? I really wouldn't worry about that. If I were you, just buy. You know, I, I think you'll probably find that this on sale pretty soon for $249. And considering the, the Nexus 9 is like $349. This is an attractive tablet. I mean, it's, it's just really beautiful. Price, it's, it's actually, I've been looking at it going, th there's a lot of really nice design cues. Let me this. show you some of the cute little design. This, I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a, uh, the power button is color keyed. The, um, the, uh, a charging connector. There's also mini HDMI output, not micro. And the charge connector is color coded, which is really nice if you're familiar with how much pain that can be. Um, no, it's it's great. It's thin. It's pretty light. Has a great display. It's IPS. Uh, the only thing that's kind of a bit negative is the, uh, frankly, is the uh, the you know the cameras. They're two five megapixel autofocus cameras. Okay. They're mad. They work. They do their job. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know. You're not raving on that. Over but them. then again, yeah. neither is the Nexus 9, to be honest with you. So the Nexus 9, the reason I keep bringing it up is because this has a plain stock uh, lollipop version of Android now. And the Nexus 9 was also running a K1. So they're very comparable in terms of processor and, uh, and software. You know, as you can see, this is completely stock. I've installed a very minimum so, so of this, apps. So this is a decent way to, if you like your vanilla Android, this yeah. is a decent way to get this it. This is a vanilla Android tablet, essentially, that's slightly smaller than Nexus 9, a little cheaper, and has some great uh, aces up its sleeve with this uh, this stylus that you can, when you pull it out, it gives you some options of apps you can use with it. Uh, and uh, most importantly, I think that it's really fast. I mean, check this out. I've got every app installed right now open. <laughs> running while we were doing all of this stuff and check out how fast the multitasking everything is super smooth you know there's no hiccups here well why did they sell this as a gaming tablet if it seems to be such a competent well, regular i tablet? think the idea was that they felt that the shield uh you know handheld play um, gaming device was a little too specialized so they decided hey why don't we make a tablet that can be great at gaming but also can be used as a general purpose device i watched a bunch of youtube videos last night i kind of caught up on some of my channels and you know, not only do they look great in 1080p HD, but in addition, you have this uh, great sound with the front-facing speakers. So this is also a fantastic media consumption device. Well, because it has to be, because gaming. I mean, yeah, and, and the headphone jack sound. sounds good too. A lot of tablets have really crappy audio out of the headphone jack because you know it's kind of like they keep they want to keep things cheap. Um, but really. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this thing, and I might actually put it in my bag and replace my Nexus 9, which I kind of carry everywhere. For a long time, I had a Nexus 7, second edition, and then I put the Nexus 9 in my bag because it's got a bit more oomph. But this, I think, uh, I don't use tablets a lot, but for my uses, which is primarily browsing the web and, and you know, watching YouTube videos and stuff. And then here, I'll show you, I have, um, wherever it is, the uh, Gravity movie, um, and you can kind of have a feel. I'll see if oh, I can. It's got, it's got a fast processor. It's got good speakers. It's got to make for a good watching experience. Oh, yeah. So here it is. We can watch it. Um, and uh, I don't know if the, my mic is going to pick this up, but so here, let's there turn it up a bit. Oh, other slide. way. Of course, Gravity doesn't have a lot of audio, so. But as you can see. Oh, sorry. Here, let me uh, adjust this a bit so you can see better. That's actually nice. That's nice, smooth motion. Now, the funny thing is 19, uh, 1920 by 1200 may sound strange, but that was actually the resolution that we had on most of our big monitors before 1080p became a thing. Correct, yeah. 
So, I mean, again, great media consumption device. You can create some cool stuff with the pen, the stylus, and it gives you a very fast tablet, all for $299. You can't go wrong. I kind of almost wish the and Nexus 9 had been this device in retrospect. Okay, Miriam, break it down for us, pros and cons. So, pros, uh, as I said, great uh, media, great gaming device, right? There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, just quickly let you know, there is a controller you can get from NVIDIA that comes with it, lets you play games with a controller, uh, paired and to you, the tablet, you really should right? get that. If you're going to use it as a gaming tablet, um, so, that right, makes sense. You can do this, you know, and then play games with uh, the controller. The controller is about 60 bucks, so I don't know if it's worth your while, but it's a nice controller. Um, you can also play remote play games from your own home PC right. if you have the right, the right graphics card on your PC. I don't have a PC, so meh. We've actually shown people how to do that on know-how, so if you've got that, right. yeah, it's a great experience. Also, um, NVIDIA has a cloud-based uh, system where they have a bunch of PCs in the cloud that let you remote play on this tablet. So there's a bunch of games you can kind of try out for cheap. Uh, and then, of course, all the Android games as well that are K1 optimized that NVIDIA has. So there's all that gaming stuff. And in addition, you have great content consumption, great speakers and display, and the ability to do some content creation with the stylus and some of the cool apps that are bundled for free with the tablet. So to me, these are, and of course, a very fast general purpose tablet. These now, are the what, three What things. didn't you like though? Uh, what didn't I like? Honestly, the design's a little kind of, I mean, it's, it's nice, but it's a little generic and there's a lot of bezel, right? Um, as you can see here, I wish it yeah, had if you, a little if you less. Like, if you like edge to edge glass, this is not it. Uh, the cameras are very meh. Uh, the power button's a bit mushy, and considering that the attention to detail on the rest of the tablet, it's kind of surprising that the volume rocker feels great. And it's not just me. Like, mm -hmm. the Engadget review says the same thing. Sean Buckley, uh, one of my ex-colleagues over there, said the same thing about it. So it's a bit odd that um, they didn't nail that. But that's it, really. Um, again, so I'd say it's a buy. There you have it. Miriam Jawar with the NVIDIA Shield tablet. It's a buy, three ninety nine for, thir for thirty two, and this 32. is a sixteen, so it's only two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. That's not bad for vanilla. For an eight inch vanilla, uh, tablet, tablet with pretty much one of the fastest processors, short of going, you know, Snapdragon eight ten or something. Miriam, thank you very much. Now, where can they find you? I mean, of course, you're all over the TwitTV network, but if sure. they want to see so, your other work. Uh, yeah, uh, the best thing is to follow me on Twitter. My handle is tankgirl without the vowels, T-N-K-G-R-L. Uh, I don't know if you've got a bottom third or whatever ready to go there, Brian. Uh, and my blog is tankgirl.com, again, without the vowels, T-N-K-G-R-L.com. Um, I also do some freelance uh, um, tech journalism work for various blogs, like uh, sometimes uh, Mobile Geeks, Read Write, Android Central. So you might find me there, although I don't do too much of that anymore. It's really here now. It really is. For me. Miriam Jouar, you're going to find her everywhere, but also here, all about Android on Tuesdays. And you'll find pretty much every week here on Before You Buy, either live or pre recorded. Thank you very much for your take on the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Cheers. Now, coming up next, we decided to give our very own snubs a set of Bluetooth headphones to see if they could break the issues that we typically have with wireless Bluetooth headphones. So here we go with snubs and the Knevo Bluetooth earbuds. Hey everyone, I'm Shannon Morse, and this week I have for Before You Buy the Kinevo BTH360S Bluetooth Stereo Headsets. These cost $59.99 MSRP, and they are basically Bluetooth connected headsets for anybody who's active and wants to go running because they don't have a cable that's sticking to them. So you can get about six hours of playback with these. I was able to get six hours of playback with no trouble on about medium volume, and standby mode on here is quoted at 150 hours. So that's really good. Uh, charge time is about two to three hours total. And once it's charged up fully, you'll get a nice little blue light that lights up on the front to let you know that it's completed. Now it's very, very lightweight. I really liked being able to, you know, just run around with these. They're only 35 grams. So really, really low profile, really easy to run around with. And they're not gonna get uncomfortable whenever you're wearing them inside of your ear. Now they do come with a nice rigid headband as well. So it's not gonna fall off. It's not gonna go anywhere. And it's actually pretty sturdy. I didn't have any problems with it. And it comes with extra ear tips as well. So you get a large, a medium, that's actually on it, and then a small pair as well, just in case you have a different size uh, ear. <laughs> and they do come with a one-year warranty too, so no problems there. If you have any issues, you can just send them back and they'll fix them for you. Now, whenever I tried to put these on, and I'll put them on for you real quick, they get stuck in my hair. 
because <laughs> I have long hair. Much better whenever I have my hair up in a ponytail, but they go right inside your ear as so, such as that, and you just leave them on. Now, it does hang out a little bit far off my head, but that's just because, well, I, I have a small head. <laughs> I'm a girl, what can I say? Now, connecting was really, really easy with these. I had no trouble with that. They are regular Bluetooth, so you can use them with anything. You just turn on your Bluetooth on your device. I did notice that there were a few dropouts with Bluetooth whenever I was running. That might be because of the change in distance between these, or maybe it was just because of the movement overall, but it wasn't, so often that I was got really annoying or anything. Now, as far as the sound goes, uh, these weren't high quality as far as the sound with music. I noticed that it, it was kind of very shallow with all of my music and there was practically no bass. Uh, even when I turned it up at max height, it, I still didn't have any bass going on in here. So that kind of was an issue for me. Vocals, on the other hand, were very clear. It was really easy to listen to things such as audible books and podcasts. So those might be a really good option if you are more of a podcast listener whenever you go running. Now, they did have really good definition between left and right stereo as well whenever I was listening to things such as Pink Floyd on here. So that was no trouble. In call answering, uh, the audio was really good whenever I was taking calls with people. I could easily pick up with the inline buttons that are included here. There's a volume plus and minus, and there's also a middle button to turn it on and off and also answer calls. Um, even the person that was calling me said that they could hear me really well as well. So on my pro side, these have a really good battery life. I like that they last throughout an entire run plus some. They also have inline controls, which is excellent, so I don't have to reach in my pocket to my phone. And they're incredibly lightweight, so really, really easy to take with you, and they're not going to bother you wearing them on your head. On the con side, though, they do have a shallow sound, especially if you're listening to a song with lots of, lots of really heavy bass. And the Bluetooth breaks up with a little bit of movement. Now, those are some definite issues, and I think they would be, if they would be a buy, try, or a don't buy, I would say they would be a don't buy. And this is specifically because of that audio quality. I really think that they need to up the ante on the sound quality to make these things like super pro for anybody who's going running and listening to music. Now again, I'm Shannon Morris, and this is the Kinevo BTH 360S Bluetooth headset. Back to you guys. Oh, and we don't shed the uh, streak of losing Bluetooth headsets. I'm sorry, we're just going to have to give the Canevo Bluetooth earbuds a don't buy. Thanks to Shannon Morse for her review. And uh, let's go ahead and move on. But before we do that, let's take just a moment to thank the sponsor for this episode of Before You Buy. Now, I was at CES this year, and at CES, the rage was all about home automation. Now, we've heard about home automation well, let's be honest, for decades, there's been the promise of the smart home, the Jetsons home, the futuristic home that would do things for us, that would figure out what we wanted, when we wanted it, that would turn lights on and off, that would take care of the locking and the security. But we haven't really found a product that could do it until now. This is smart things. This was rated the number one smart home product at CES 2015, and you need to take a look at it because this right here makes all the difference. This is the hub. This is where your smart home will start. Now, what makes this special is that, yes, you get all of the different devices that smart things can furnish you with, with outlets, with motion detectors, with moisture detectors, with temperature and humidity detectors, with the open and closed sensors that you would use on doors and windows, but you don't have to use just smart things stuff. It's intelligent enough to be able to work with Nest thermostats or your Sonos audio system or your drop cams or pretty much any home automation system you may have. And it combines control into one single pane of glass. Now, this is the part that I really like. This right here is the presence sensor. This means that I could walk into my home and because I have this on my person, my smart home will know that I'm home and it can unlock my doors. It can turn on the lights so I have a, a nice bright path to walk into. It could turn on the, the air conditioner so the temperature is just the way I like it. It could turn on my audio system so it's playing the, the music that I want to hear when I get home and I want to relax. This, folks, is the promise of the smart home. Smart Things is going to give it to you right now. Now, many of you have dabbled with home automation in the past, and you've had different experiences, and I want you to put that all aside for a second and realize that what SmartThings wants to do is not force you to, to create your home in a particular way or, or create your off time in a particular way, but they want to create devices and solutions that work around you. 
It will control your lights, your locks, your security, everything through a simple iOS, Android, or Windows Phone app. And because it's an open platform, SmartThings works well just with as well with its own sensors as it does with connected devices from Dropcam, Schlage locks, Honeywell thermostats, and many more. Again, it's so revolutionary that it won CES 2015's Editor Choice Award. Oh, I would probably use this so that when uh, when uh, I have, say, let's say water in the basement, the moisture sensor is going to turn on a pump so that it will get rid of that excess water. I'm going to use it so that if someone comes up to my front door and there's not supposed to be anyone there, it will actually play the sound of a barking dog and drive them away, as well as turn on the lights and start the drop cams so that I can get a feed, a picture of who showed up uninvited. There really is no limit to what you can do with your smart things other than your own imagination. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to get started with your smart home right now. It has no monthly fees, and the kits just start at $189. SmartThings is an affordable way to create your smart home now. And just for our Twit audience, SmartThings is offering you a chance to save even more. You get 10% off any home security or solution kit and free shipping in the United States when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code TWIT. That's smartthings.com slash TWIT and use the offer code TWIT. And we thank SmartThings for their support of Before You Buy. Now folks, sometimes, just sometimes, we like to give products to our hosts, to our editors, to our staff members so that we can find out whether or not their taste is on the level. So we went over to our very own Mike Elgin and we gave him the Olo clip to see what he could make out of it. Hey, it's Mike Elgin here, and today I'm reviewing the Oloclip 4-in-1 lens for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. This is a clever $80 accessory for the iPhone that uh, will give you different lenses. And of course, Oloclip has another product that does telephoto type of uh, lens changes, but this one is for a wide angle, a fisheye, and a couple of macro lenses. So let's go into some of the details here. Uh, the wide angle is about 24 millimeters is probably the most generally useful um, lens that uh, the Oloclip has. And what this will enable you to do is instead of doing photosphere type things, if you want to capture a whole room, you can just have the wide angle effect. Uh, there's also a fisheye lens. If you turn it around, uh, you'll see the fisheye feature. This will capture the entire room with tons of distortion, of course, because it's a fisheye lens. And by unscrewing the, uh, the fisheye and the wide-angle lenses, you get a 10x macro lens and a 15x macro lens for super, super close-ups. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll get into the quality of this, this imagery in just a second. But first, let's go uh, through some of the things that come with this, um, this set of, of lenses. Uh, the way that they do it is that they uh, clip it on the top and you turn it around in order to switch lenses. But if you're not using it, you know, what do you do with this thing? Well, they've, they've given you this um, whole system for uh, clipping on uh, different colored plastic, um, uh, you know, sort of clip-on things that enable you to attach an included lanyard if you want to hang it around your neck. I don't see a lot of people really doing that. People don't want to carry their iPhone accessories around their neck. But if you want to do that, it, it is an option. It all co also comes with a small bag that lets you just throw the lens into the bag and then you can put it in your backpack. That's probably more practical and probably going to be the option that most people use. Now, let's talk about the, the image quality uh, first, and then we'll get into some of the other specifics. The wide-angle uh, view uh, has some uh, distortion, uh, some black corners, softness around the edges, but the center is very, very clear. You kind of expect that for a device like this, uh, for a wide-angle lens, that for a, a phone that isn't designed uh, to use a lens. It's not like a, a Canon, you know, DSLR uh, camera uh, that's designed to have swappable lenses. And so it's pretty good considering uh, what it is that they're trying to achieve uh, there. And of course, the fisheye lens has even more edge distortion, more black corners, more softness around the edges. But it's it does the job uh, if you really want to uh, use a fisheye lens. Now, the macro lenses are really interesting. They are super, super close up. Even the 10X and of course, the 15X gets you right into the action. A, a, you know, a grain of sand will take up half the screen. And the macro lenses will actually um, give you an incredibly shallow depth of field. I mean, unbelievably shallow. So if you, for example, uh, zero in on a, 
a, a kernel of popcorn the and focus on the top of the uh, kernel of popcorn, you know, 10% down the kernel of popcorn is already super blurry. Very, very shallow depth of field. It takes some, um, some care in taking macro photos with the Oloclip uh, lens. Uh, but when you do that, the, the shallow depth of field can actually have a nice effect. One of the great things about this, and of course the Oloclip has been around for a long time, they've made some improvements and in some cases because of the changes in the design of the iPhone, they've actually had to make it somewhat less convenient. So let's talk, talk about the improvements first. First of all, the best improvement of all is that the new Oloclip can fit over the front facing selfie camera as well as the back camera. The lens itself is larger than the previous version, which is nice. And, you know, again, the rear camera is about uh, 32 millimeters in width. The, the, the wide angle will take you to about 24 millimeters. It's a relatively subtle change in the angle, uh, and it's a very welcome one because it gives you the kind of scope uh, of the scene that you want without, you know, radical distortion. So you're likely to see that. Now, let's talk about some of the things that they did that made it kind of worse. Um, uh, for starters, um, and one of the things that hasn't changed actually is that you still have to remove the case. If you have a case, which most, most people have, you have to remove that case in order to put on the Oloclip. So that's a minor inconvenience, I think, for most people. It's a little harder to place than the previous version. The, 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 the first version of the Oloclip, I believe, was with the iPhone 4 and 4S. If you recall, that had a perfectly flat front, perfectly flat back, uh, and the and a nice rounded edge. So the way the Yolo Clip worked for that phone is you just clipped it on the edge, it went right over the lens, and there was no messing around. Now, because Apple has changed the design of the iPhone, you have to kind of fiddle with it a little bit to get the uh, to get the lens to cover either the front or rear facing cameras. It, it will never go straight on. You kind of have to line it up and and do a little bit of you know five seconds of troubleshooting to get it on. So it's slightly. Uh, less uh, convenient. And, uh, and of course, this lens is, is going to have an issue that you have to uh, take care of because if you're going to use the macro lenses, you unscrew the regular lenses. That exposes the internal lenses. And so you're always going to have to be careful about dust and other things getting inside the Oloclip and also smudges on the outside of the Oloclip because with these kinds of lenses, it's really going to show up. Well, that is my review of the Oloclip 4-in-1 lens for iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. And of course, I am giving this a buy. This is a really great product if you like to take pictures with your iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, and I highly recommend it. Uh, and my name is Mike Elgin, and that's the review of the Oloclip 4-in-1 lens for 6 and 6 Plus. That's a buy for the Olo Clip 4-in-1 lens for your iPhone. If you are an Instagram addict, if you love giving high-quality video to your friends, well, maybe you just need to pick one up. Thanks to Mike Elgin. Of course, you can find him all over the Twit TV network. He does tech news today every morning. And as our news director, you'll find him anytime breaking news may happen. Now, let's change things up a little bit. We've been talking about attachments for your iPhone, about earbuds for those music aficionados, even a gaming tablet that's good at things that aren't games. Now, let's talk a little bit about that uh, trend that I saw at CES for hybrid tablets. Acer sent us their latest and greatest hybrid, the R13, and this is what I thought of it. The R13 is Acer's latest submission into the growing field of convertible ultrabooks notebooks, tablets, and other all-in-one felt package. At 13.5 inches wide by 9.1 inches deep and 0.7 inches thick, the R13 is quite a bit bigger than a typical tablet, and at 3.31 pounds, it's also noticeably heavier than a top-shelf Ultrabook. But that extra size and weight also gets you a lot of extra power and flexibility. Our review unit, priced at $1,400, sports a 13.3-inch 16x9 2560 1440 multi-touch screen driven by a 2 GHz dual-core Intel i7-4510U on top of 8 GB of LPDDR3 system memory. Acer dropped in two 256GB SSDs in RAID 0 on a SATA 600 card for 512GB of crazy fast storage, as well as a media card reader. Network connectivity is provided by an integrated 802.11 A, B, G, N, and a C wireless card. The R13 has a sparse port loadout. With a combo audio, two USB 3.0, and one HDMI port on the left side of the unit, and a USB 2.0 port on the right that can be used to charge your portable devices even when the R13 is off. Taking some of its styling cues from my personal favorite Ultrabook, the Acer S7, the R13 uses Gorilla Glass on both sides of the lid, 
anodized aluminum for the keyboard tray and palm rest, and matte finished polycarb for the base. The keyboard is quite usable, a little soft, but it also has decent travel, a firm feel, a nice little click, and blue backlighting. The trackpad also looks like it's been lifted from the S7, which is good, but somehow it didn't feel quite as responsive as it should be. The 3220mAh lithium-ion battery is rated for 7.5 hours of operation, and I actually averaged 8 hours while using it as my daily driver. Performance-wise, the R13 performed well for an Ultrabook, averaging 2314 in PC Mark 8. Pushing the score up were fantastic read-write speeds from the RAID 0 SSD. Of course, specs and performance are good, but what makes the R13 unique is its hybrid modes. Acer uses what they call an easel arrow hinge that allows the screen to pivot 180 degrees along its center line. Combined with an ultra-strong yoke, the screen can be placed in six different positions. Notebook mode, easel mode, stand mode, pad mode, tent mode, and display mode. While the difference in position may seem slight for many of these modes, they are actually quite useful in different situations, and more importantly, the R13 pulls them off. The R13 is an above-average Ultrabook with good performance, a nice screen, and decent bells and whistles. It's a high-powered Windows tablet with a nice format for cradling. Combined with Acer's Active Pen, it's fantastic as a drawing and drafting device, and the specialized modes give it a little extra... wow. All in all, the Acer R13 is a fantastic example of a hybrid, and maybe, just maybe, right for you. It's getting harder and harder to justify a tablet that does some laptop functions when you can get a laptop that does really, really good tablet functions at a price that's not that much more than just the tablet itself along with its accessories. Now, there are a few things that I really liked about the R13. I like the speed. I like the construction. I love this innovative hinge. I like the fact that it has all these useful modes. And, it, you know, I don't think it's going to replace my Acer S7. I think that's still going to be my daily driver because the price on this, and this falls in the cons, is a little bit high. And... I'm not so big on this trackpad. In fact, this trackpad feels like the trackpad that was on the original Acer S7. It's a little bit stiff. It's not as responsive as I would like. I'm thinking that the next generation of the R13 is going to be much better. Uh, this is their second attempt at this sort of multi-use easel style of computer. And I, I, I got to say, it's got its definite uses. If you've ever been on a plane and you've had to sort of squeeze your laptop in on that tray and then someone puts their seat back and suddenly it becomes impossible, you're going to love something like that, that to stand mode. If, if you do like a vertical use of your tablet, you're going to love be, to be able to do this to your laptop and have all the power of your full operating system, but in a format that really isn't a whole lot heavier or bigger than your 10-inch tablet. Now, as far as try, buy, or don't buy, I, I got to give the Acer R13 a definite buy. If you are looking for a new laptop, if you want something that's a little bit different, that does the hybrid thing, then uh, the R13 is probably for you. Now, we did start a new thing here on uh, Before You Buy called the parting shot. It's where we take products that have been sitting around for a while because they don't really merit a full review on their own. And we give them to a member of the staff and say, hey, give us in the shortest amount of time possible what are your impressions. So we reached back into the grab bag that is our product showroom and we asked OMG Chad to take a look at the Ogio, I think that's how you say it, Ascend Backpack. Hello, my name is Chad. I'm with Twit and Before You Buy, and today I'm reviewing the OGO Ascend Backpack. This is a backpack that sports a 15-inch laptop sleeve. I am keeping my MacBook Pro in here right now. Uh, it also has a sunglasses case, which uses sort of hardened um, canvas, and this would be perfect for sunglasses or maybe even a point-and-shoot camera, that sort of thing. There's a large compartment, which inside houses two uh, stretchy sleeves. Inside of a smaller compartment on the front, there are pockets, which would be perfect for an iPad or something like that. There's also a few uh, places to hook on carabiners. On the side, there is a stretchy pouch for a bottle. And on the other side, there's more of a secret pouch, which only opens on the straps right here. And currently, I have a passport in there. 
Altogether, this is uh, very light. It's very sturdy. I'm gonna give this a buy. I really enjoyed using it. It was uh, really nicely constructed and stylish in the process. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Chad Johnson. See you next time. Thanks to Chad Johnson. He gives a buy to the Ogio Ascend backpack. Now remember, before you buy is a chance for you to find out the latest and greatest in gadgetry from the Wizards here at Twit TV. And you can watch this show each and every single week on Fridays at 2 o'clock p.m. or closer to 2.30 p.m. Pacific. You can find us at live.twit.tv. You could also jump into the chat room at irc.twit.tv and uh, maybe talk to me during the show. I love your feedback and I'll always try to include it whenever I can. Also, I'd like to thank everyone who makes this show possible, especially to our presenters. That's to Miriam Jouar for showing us off the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Of course, to Snubs for showing us those earbuds. Mike Elgin for giving us the latest and greatest for iPhone accessories. And of course, OMG Chad for giving us your next backpack. Now, until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballister. Remember, you've got to watch before you buy. <laughs>